Hey y'all, welcome to part two of my series on V-carving for the absolute beginner. Before we get started, let me just say that I am in no way sponsored nor endorsed by Vectric Limited nor any other company. I'm doing this series to help the person who has never done this before get into the CAD CAM software, design and finish a project within the CAD CAM software. Also notice please that I'm using VCarve Pro version 9.507, but everything I'm going to show you is applicable for VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, and Aspire. They all perform identically. Having gotten that behind us, this is the project I'm going to show you how to create. This is a simple address number sign. We'll create a vector boundary box for the text and we'll cut it out with a profile toolpath. Before we do that, we have to design it. So let's go ahead and get into a new session of VCarve and we'll design the project from scratch. In order to do that we'll have to first create a new file. Now I'm going to be using a piece of a select pine 1 by 12 from my local home center. Though they're called 1 by 12s the actual physical dimensions of them are three quarters of an inch thick nominal by eleven and a quarter inches wide nominal. I'm going to cut a twelve inch piece out of that eight foot length of one by twelve. So I will end up with a piece of material that is twelve inches wide in X, eleven point two five inches high in Y, and with a nominal thickness of three quarters of an inch. Now, as I've said many times before, measure the thickness of your material. Because we're going to be V-carving, this is not as important as it otherwise would be, and I'll show you why a little bit later on. I should have started from the top by letting you know up here at the top this is a single-sided project. We have our job size in inches. My Z0 position for V carving, always the material surface. My XY datum position for layout purposes only while I'm creating the design, my XY datum position will be the center. I'm going to go ahead and accept everything else the way it is. We'll click OK. In order to create the pattern, we can go a couple of different directions and I'm going to show you both directions so you can decide for yourself which is which you would prefer to do. The first thing we'll need in order to get this profile shape out here is we'll need to create this outer boundary box, our profile. So we'll come over here under Create Vectors to draw a rectangle. I'll click that icon. I want to anchor the center of my rectangle on my X0, Y0. For the corner type, I don't want a square corner. I want a radius internal corner, which is going to make this type of a corner right here and I've chosen to make that radius one inch. For the width of my box, for, of my rectangle, I want to go with 10 inches. That's going to give me a 10 inch wide sign here in X. And I've decided on a 6 inch height in Y because proportionally it just looks nicer to me. You can change any of these measurements to suit the sign that you choose to create. I'll go ahead and create that rectangle. 
close that box. So now from here we can go in one of two different methods, one or two different directions. Both will give us the uh, result that we're looking for. One is just simpler to do than the other. So we'll go with the more difficult way first and get that out of the way. And that is to come up here into the under create vectors to draw text. I'll click that icon and it takes a second to load because it has to load your font list. Starting from the top of this form here, our text will be entered here. Now if you look down below it, we have this button here that says larger edit. And if I click that button, it opens up a larger edit text window out here. If you have a lot of text that you're going to be carving, it's sometimes more convenient, especially if you have eyesight like mine, to use this larger window. But since all I'm going to be using is a four-digit house number, I don't need this larger window, so I'll just hit cancel. So our text will go up here. Now we come down below here, we have two different types of fonts. We have true type fonts, which are these fonts here that we're, most of us are used to seeing. Then we have single line fonts. I'll select that to show you we don't have nearly as many choices. Single line fonts are not used with V carving. Single line fonts are used for engraving, generally speaking engraving on glass or engraving on metals, where you're not actually carving down into the material, you're just scratching the surface. True type fonts are used for V carving, because the toolpath will calculate to carve into the material. With a single line font, it won't. And if you look at the font list, every single one of these fonts are available in true type. Or, excuse me, that yeah, go back to true type fonts. Every single one of them are also available in true type. So you're not missing anything. There aren't fonts over here that you don't have over here. Now I'm going to select the Times New Roman True Type font mainly because it's something everybody has if you have a Windows based PC. It comes with Windows. You don't have to search for it. We all have it. We're all familiar with it. We're all used to it. It's an easy font to read and an easy font to work with. Down here I have a choice of bold or italic. I'm not going to use either one for this. And here we have text alignment. Now if you look over here in our window, this is a new feature within vCarve uh, 9.5. And that is this text box here. If you look over here at the anchor point, we have x negative 2.5, y negative 2.5. That's the location of this dot. It is two and a half inches to the left and two and a half inches below our x, y, zero. If I come up here to zero, zero and click, it moves our text box up here. And our text is now anchored at zero, zero point. That's where I want it. Our text alignment is to the center. You see this dot right here. When I start typing, it's going to base all of the text that I type into this type into this box up here. It's going to align it to the center of the material. I'll demonstrate that now. As I typed in real time, every letter I added made that text box slightly wider and the center of my text ended up on my Y zero line. 
That's another feature of version 9.5. Everything happens out here in real time as it happens up here. There's no longer an apply button. It happens in real time as you use it. So if I backspace and eliminate the 5, it automatically adjusts my text position and text size, text width, based on the text height here. Put my 5 back in and it adjusts in real time. Okay, To get us going, this is a good start. So I'll go ahead and say close. Now, if you notice, even though I had this set to anchor on my X0, Y0, my text is above my zero line. That's because that text box, it's kind of a throwback to the old uh, writing paper you used in first and second grade. It puts the base of your characters on that line. Because we want our text to be centered inside our rectangle, we'll need to align that to the center. So, I'll just click off over here, show you how to align this to the center of our rectangle. We'll first select the text object, hold down shift, then select our box, our rectangle. Then we'll come over here under transform objects to align selected objects. We want to align our object to selection. If you see here, this will align the selected objects to the last item in the selection. I selected the text first, then I selected the rectangle last, so it will align the text to the rectangle. I want it to center the text both vertically and horizontally, so I'll choose this icon here, click it, and the text is now centered within that rectangle, vertically and horizontally. Now I can close that and click off to deselect all of them. Now, this is just my opinion. We could go ahead and cut all of this out right now and it would, we would get a good result. But it's just my opinion that that text is a little bit small. So I want to select that text, then click it again, which brings us into move and transform mode. Now I want to make that text just a little bit larger, but I want it to stay anchored in the center. So what I'll do is I'll hold down the shift key, bring my cursor over here to one of these transparent boxes in the corners, not the black one, the transparent corners, and it turns into a couple of arrows uh, Di that couple of diagonal error arrows there. Holding down the shift, I'll click the left mouse button and pull outwards. And we can see that it will, then I let go of that button, let go of the uh, shift key, and we can see it enlarged that text to better fill the center of our rectangle. I'm going to hold down the control button and tap the letter Z so you can see the change. That's what we had. Still holding down control, I'll tap the letter Y to redo the change. And that's what we have now. I think that's in a little bit better proportion to this rectangle. We're now ready to cut this design. That was the difficult way of doing this. Let me go ahead and select our text. We'll delete that and I'll show you an easier way. And that is to select the rectangle. And if you look over here under Create Vectors, we have two text icons. We have Draw Text and we have Draw Text within a vector box. I'll select that one and you'll see it draws a blue rectangle around our rectangle. 
what this will do is it will automatically size our text to fill this rectangle. You'll notice that we don't have a choice down here for text height or text size. All we have is the width of our bounding box, this rectangle here that we created. We can use the larger edit window. We'll make sure we have true type fonts. We have our font selected. I'm not going to use bold or italic, but I will align my text to the center of our rectangle. Come up here and type and it automatically sizes it based on our margin size and any of our stretch, which we have none. It's automatically sized and it's automatically placed in the center of our rectangle. We can close that and we're ready to cut these toolpaths. That's how much easier it is to do that. Let's go ahead and let's calculate some toolpaths. I'll select the text first. We'll go over here to our toolpath tab. Now I'm going to do a, make a slight digression here. We're going to cut this using the V-carve and engraving toolpath. A couple of minutes ago I mentioned single line fonts. Single line fonts are used with the quick engraving toolpath. Again, the criteria for the quick engraving toolpath is different from the V-carve toolpath. The V-carve toolpath will uh, cause the bit to plunge into the material and carve it away. The quick engraving toolpath is for use with a rotary engraving tool or a diamond drag bit. It uses pressure to scratch the surface of the material. You wouldn't want a V-bit plunging into a piece of glass in an attempt to carve it away. You just scratch the surface with the quick engraving toolpath and that's where single line fonts are used. Since we're not using the quick engrave toolpath, we're using true type fonts to carve out material. We'll use the V-carve engraving toolpath. So select that icon. Our start depth will be zero. For V-carving, we always want to start at the surface of the material. Not going to use a flat depth. That's outside of the scope of this video. That will be well within the scope of the part three of this series. Because I'm not using a flat depth, I cannot use a flat area clearance tool. The V-bit I'm going to use for this project is a 60 degree V-bit with the one half inch cutting diameter. Now let's look at this for just a second. My V-bit has an included angle of 60 degrees, a cutting diameter of half of an inch, not the shank diameter, the cutting diameter of half an inch. The cutting parameters here, the pass depth is 0.2 inches. That's as deep as it's going to cut per pass. If anything down here in my artwork has to be cut deeper than 0.2, it'll have to make more than one pass to do it. So it'll come around and make its first pass to cut as deep as it can up to 0.2. Then if it needs to go deeper, it'll come back and do it in a second pass. Or if it has to go deeper than 0.4, it'll make a third pass. It's the pass depth that determines how many passes it's going to make, it's going to take to cut to the proper depth for our V carve. Okay, and that's all I wanted to show you on that. I'll go ahead and click cancel because I'm not going to edit the bit. Again, I'm not using a flat area clearance tool. I'm just going to go ahead and accept everything down here 
except I'll name this vcarve numbers and then 60 degree. That's a note to myself that I'm using a 60 degree V bit. I'll calculate that toolpath and we have our toolpath here. Now let me kind of crank off to the side a little bit here and zoom in and you can see again the red lines are rapid moves. That's where the bit is retracted up out of the material and it's moving at its rapid rate to get to these positions. The light blue marks here are plunge moves. So starting from the very beginning we see the bit is going to move rapid over here from the center to this point here. It's going to plunge in and then the dark blue are the X and Y moves as it's cutting. So it'll come along and it'll cut and get to a certain point, lift up, move over, plunge in, cut, make a couple of passes to carve out this eight. Number eight, lift up, move over here, plunge down to start cutting the number two. Okay? That's what it's going to end up doing and that's how it's going to cut out for instance the wide part of this number two it's going to make one pass here it's going to come back it's going to make this pass here then it'll plunge down and make that pass there to cut out cut the the final depth of this v carve so let me back out go back to a straight Z view here and I will leave the machined area color right now set to the material color and we'll preview then zoom in again kind of rock it back a little bit here so you can see and again keeping our eyes down here on our X Y and Z display as I move my cursor around we can come up over here to the base of this number two and looking at my Z we're cutting just slightly more than a quarter of an inch deep in some spots. For an exterior sign in three quarter inch thick material that's pretty deep that's pretty good we'll get some good contrast out of that sign. Here in the wider areas that's not as much of a concern as it would be here in the narrower areas like this real narrow portion of the number two. If we zoom in here and look at the narrower areas of the number two we just need to make sure that we have cut deep enough here to where any sanding we do on the surface isn't going to eliminate detail here by sanding it out. We've got good deep cutting over here for sure, but it's more important sometimes to check the depth of the shallow areas than it is to check the depth of the deeper areas. Now that we've looked at it with no color within the cutout, Let's go ahead and change that machined area to toolpath color and we'll select a color here. Let's just make it black so that we have a nice contrast with this maple. So we've got our V-carve done and that looks nice. We'll close our preview. We'll come over here to the 2D view again, click off and we'll select our rectangle. For this, I'll just use a simple profile toolpath. Click that icon. Our start depth is going to be zero. And as I do every time, our cut depth, I'm going to type in the letter Z, the plus sign, 0 .005, because I want this to cut five thousandths deeper than the Z thickness of the material. 
I want it to cut all the way through and into the spoil board just slightly to make sure I cut all the way through the material no matter how thick it is, what, no matter what kind of variations in material thickness I have. Then I'll just tap the equals button and it does the calculation for me and gives me my cutting depth. For the end mill, I don't have any real sharp interior corners here, so I'll use a quarter inch end mill, and that's fine. It's going to do it in six passes, that's fine. I'm going to machine the vectors to the outside of the vector using a climb cut. I am going to do a separate last pass with an allowance of 0 0.01. I am going to add tabs to the tool path. I want them to be a half inch long and a quarter inch tall to hold this piece of material in, to hold my project within my piece of material. And I'm going to edit these tabs. Now I'll come up here and I'll click on add tabs and it automatically added this one here. Now I don't like to put tabs in corners because they are a pain to remove, cut, and sand off. So I'll drag it up here. And all I did there was I put my cursor over it, click and hold, and drag it to where I want it. Now I want three more tabs on this. So I'll come over here to this side, directly opposite this one, and watch my cursor when I get up here to the edge, you see that check mark show up. That's showing me that I can add a tab there. I'm safe to add a tab there. So I'll click it, and I'll come up above, click one there, and click one there. So now I have four tabs that are going to hold this project in the piece of material until I remove it. Go ahead and close. Ramp, I'm going to ramp my plunge move into the material. I'm going to use a smooth ramp over a distance of one inch. My general rule of thumb is at least double the diameter of the bit. But on a quarter inch bit, I like to go one inch because it makes that a bit of a more gentle plunge into the material. I'm not going to worry about anything else over here until I get to corners. I'm going to make sure I have a check mark in sharp external corners. I want these corners to be sharp. Okay, go back. Everything else is good except I'm going to rename this profile cutout and I'll calculate the toolpath. It's giving me the warning that the tool will cut through the material. I want it to. Okay. And there are our tool paths for the profile cut. We'll go ahead and preview that. And there's our profile. I've got nice deep 3D tabs here holding it in place. But because I have 3D tabs, I can't double click on my waist here or it'll make the whole project disappear because it's still connected. It's still considered one piece of material, according to VCard. So, we can twist and turn it a little bit here and zoom in, and this project is ready for us to save G-code and go outside and cut. After I cut away my tabs and sand them nice and flush, I could put an OG bit or something like that in my router table, and run this over and put a nice decorative edge around this address sign, then proudly put it on my home. That is, of course, assuming that I got all the information correct. Now, I did this on purpose to show you that you can make corrections. That's not my address. I made a mistake. So we'll reset the preview, close it, go back over to the drawing tool path, into the 2D view. I'll select the text. 
come back over to text within a vector box click that icon and you see my text is up here all of my settings are the same I can move my cursor make the on-the-spot correction it updated it in real time close go back over to the toolpaths tab then I'll come over here and select my V carving toolpath double click it and it reopens make sure I have my text selected calculate and there's my corrected sign all of this is editable all of it is correctable and all of it is relatively simple to do I know this was a very basic sign but just about any V carve sign that you would like to do be it numbers be it text is done the same way now, we will be getting to, into some more advanced V-carving techniques in future videos, but this will be something that will help get you started. And it doesn't matter if you're doing numbers, letters, or paragraphs. They're all basically done the same way. Now, my last video, I did say that this is the time to experiment. This is the time to play. If I select my V carved numbers here go to my toolpath color and hit no fill I can get back over here and see a little bit better how deep this is cutting now this area down here is pretty deep I may decide you know that might be cutting too deep into the material I want to change over to a 90 degree V bit now is the time to do that. I can reset the preview, double click on that toolpath, come up, hit the select button, change to a 90 degree V bit with a half inch cutting diameter, click OK, calculate that toolpath again, and preview all toolpaths then come over and look at it and we're not cutting near as deep here this is the time to experiment if I decide I didn't like this I could double click this again and go back to my 60 degree V bit but since I just recalculated this with the 90 degree V bit I need to change this name right click rename click off and there's the change everything you do here can be changed this is the time to experiment so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here if you got anything at all out of this video I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up down there if you'd like to follow along with my with the rest of this series or any of my other CNC adventures I do hope you'll subscribe to my channel now if you have any questions comments or concerns I do hope you'll leave me a comment down below in the comment section if you'd rather not leave a public comment you can head over to my website marklindsaycnc.com which is sponsored by Harmonial Media and click the contact us link and send me a message I do read every message I get on marklindsaycnc.com and I do my best to answer each and every one of them I'll put a link to marklindsaycnc.com down in the description to make it easy for you to find me whether you subscribe to me or not I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.